So today I have Mr. Fuzzy Bottom here to say hi. Your Fuzzy Bottom, stop being shy. He says hi, guys. I miss you. Okay, so um, today we're going to be learning about adjectives. Um, adjectives. So what we're learning today? Adjectives. Why are we learning it? To become better readers and writers. I'm sorry, my handwriting's all messed up because I'm holding him. I don't know why, but it throws me all off balance. And how will we know we've learned it? When we can use them in our writing. Use adjectives. In our writing. Now, when you use adjectives in your writing, it's like making your sentences beefier. So when you write me a sentence and it says, I like the cat, it's like giving me a tiny little fish for dinner. I mean, yeah, okay, that fish is fine, but it's not what I want. What I want is a big old fat juicy fish. So when you add adjectives to your sentence, like, I like that fat black and white cat. That's a big, fat, juicy sentence. So adjectives are what we use to beef up our sentences and make them meatier. So um, what you're going to need for today's lesson for both um, language arts and math is a piece of paper folded into fours, a pencil, your shoes, and that is about it. Um, so let's start with our sheet of paper. We are folded into fours. And we're going to start with the top box, which we normally number. We normally number our boxes. So let's do one, two, three, four. Puffy doesn't like that I'm holding Mr. Fuzzy Bottom. Now, adjectives are describing words. Describing words are what make our sentences be here. So when you're describing something, you're talking about that thing's characteristics, the things that make that thing that thing. That's confusing. But let's talk about the characteristics of Mr. Fuzzy Bottom. So, one good adjective go-to is color. So what color is Mr. Fuzzy Bottom? He's brown, mostly. Let's go with brown. He's fuzzy. Um, it can be texture, things that apply to your senses or adjectives usually. So fuzzy, I mean, that's right there in his name. So we're going to write fuzzy. Uh, size is another great adjective. So is Mr. Fuzzy Bottom a big animal or is he a small animal? Let's think about that for a minute. Hmm. Well, I have a dog and he's much bigger. And cats are bigger than Mr. Fuzzy Bottom. So I'm going to say he's a small animal. Even though he's really fat for a guinea pig. Okay, so maybe, um, oh, let's talk about how it feels. So he's soft. He's soft. I'm running out of room. How does he smell? Oh, uh, so let's put stinky. Stinky is an adjective. I'm just trying to fit these in wherever I can. Stinky. 
as you come up with a few adjectives of your own, pause your video, and I want you to come up with two more adjectives for Mr. Fuzzy Bottom. Okay, great. <laughs> um, ask your parents if that's a good adjective and if they describe Mr. Fuzzy Bottom. Okay, Mr. Slate's going to take Mr. Fuzzy Bottom for us now. Now, what I want you to do is I've never seen your bedrooms before because I don't get to go to your house. So I want you to take your paper and in your second box, you don't have to write this, I'm just telling you what to put in the second box, five adjectives that describe your room. Yeah, that's not really a complete sentence, that's a sentence fragment. All right, so I want you to go to your room and write five words that tell me about your bedroom. Is it messy? Is it clean? Is it big? Is it small? Is it pink? Is it blue? Is it white? Is it purple? Um, does it smell? Does it, is it a furry room? I don't know. Maybe you have fur on the walls. I don't know your life. Maybe it's um, in the middle of the house, so you would say safe. Or you could say that it's cold or hot in your room, like maybe you're far away from the AC. I don't know. But I want you to write five adjectives to describe your room. Okay? Are we good? Pause the video. Go do that. Okay, so I should be able to think and visualize your room based on those five words you gave me. So I would say for my bedroom that my room is gray, it is big, it is, hmm, it is comfortable, it's cold, and it is bright, like there's a lot of light in there. So it may take you a little bit of time to think of your five, five adjectives, but that's fine. Because sometimes coming up with the right adjectives or the right descriptive words to describe something, it's a little hard. Because we're not used to thinking of it like that. We just kind of see it and we know it when we're not really used to putting those words in there. So I want you to start thinking in adjectives so that when you write, you can make your sentences beefier. Okay, so moving on, we are going to read a book called Clever Tom the Leprechaun. Now we're reading this again because St. Patrick's Day is on Tuesday. And Clever Tom the Leprechaun, the Leprechaun has a lot of words that we don't use nowadays. So you have to use context clues or the words that go around the words the words, mm, the other words on the page to figure out what that word means. So you're going to have to look at the pictures. You're going to have to figure out what's happening in the story and read the whole page to figure out what certain words mean. So that's what we're going to do in Clever Tom and the Leprechaun. This is by Linda Shoot. Shoot. Um, and it's actually uh, based on an old folk tale. So um, I enjoy reading books that are based on old folk tales. So let's get into it. Clever Tom and the Leprechaun, retold and illustrated by Linda Shute. An old Irish story. Clever Tom and the Leprechaun. One fine day on Lady Day in the harvest, Tom Fitzpatrick took a ramble down the lane. A ramble down the lane. Well, let's look at what he's doing. What do you think he's doing? I think he's taking a walk down the lane, like a leisurely walk. He's not in any hurry to go anywhere. He's just walking down the lane. I think that's what ramble means. Click, clack, click, clack, he heard through the hedge. So Tom tiptoed closer to take a look. <coughs> Mr. Slate, can you please let the dogs out? The clacking sound stopped when Tom peeped through the bushes and in the shadow, what did he see? Why, a big gallon pitcher. 
and a teeny tiny man with a brown leather apron and a three cornered hat. Now, picture, I even underlined it here. That's not spelled like a picture like you take a picture, like my Nana and Papa on the wall there. That's not a picture like with a camera. That's a picture. So, let's write picture. P I T C H E R. I even looked to make sure I spelled it right. All right, so let's look at that page. What could a picture be? Why, a big gallon picture and a teeny tiny man with a brown leather apron and a three cornered hat. So, this is the picture, isn't it? A gallon is a measurement of liquid. And this looks like it holds liquid, so this must be the picture. So let's draw one. You know my art skills, so don't make fun of me. So I'm gonna, I don't know, put like a circle here and a big pot belly there for it and a handle. It probably has something to pour with too, so let's make a little spout. That kind of looks like a teapot, but I was going for a pitcher, kind of like that. Maybe I needed to make it come down a little more like this. There we go. That looks more pitchery to me. Okay. So, that is what a pitcher looks like. Some of you may have a pitcher at home for like Kool-Aid or iced tea or water, and it's in your fridge maybe. Oh, there's a bigger picture of the pitcher. <laughs> picture of the pitcher. Up the small man climbed on his wee wooden stool and dipped his little pig in into the crook, into the crock, I'm sorry. Then he settled down with his full mug beside him to hammer on the heel of a fairy-sized shoe. By the powers, thought Tom, it's a leprechaun. If I catch him and scare him, he'll give me his gold. Since I'm a clever fellow, that should be simple. Before the sun sets, I'll have my fortune made. Hmm. So this must be clever Tom. And this is the leprechaun in his little three-cornered hat. Tom stared at the leprechaun and tried not to blink. He knew that if he looked away, the old man would escape. Then he crept up quite near. What do you think crept meant? Crept. What do you think that means? If he crept up quite near. I think that means he kind of crawled quietly and silently, kind of sneaked up on the leprechaun. Politely saying, good Day to you, neighbor. Blessings on your good work. Thank you kindly, said the small one, but he never looked up. He just kept on tapping at the heel piece of the brogue. Now, I'm assuming that means shoe, brogue. Like I said, there's a lot of words in this that we just don't use anymore. Tom moved his hand closer while he smiled very sweetly and said, Today's a holiday. You shouldn't have to work. The leprechaun frowned. Frowned means to make a sad face. And answered Tom sharply, If I do, that's my business and none of your, your own. Instead of pestering me, young man, you ought to be watching your father's fields. Look there, the cows have broke into the oats. See, they're knocking the corn all about. Cows in the cornfield? Tom's start, head started turning. Now, if you're a farmer, and cows eat corn, and cows get into your cornfield, how do you think you'd feel? Not very good, I'd assume, because the cows are eating your way of life, right? You gotta sell that corn to make money. But he wasn't fooled by the leprechaun's trick. Quickly, he grabbed the sly fellow and cried, now you're my prisoner. Tell me, where is your gold? The leprechaun wiggled and twisted and whined. I'm just a poor man, but Tom held him fast. You and I both know you're lying, said Tom. And he made a fierce, frightening face. Where's your frightening face? What's your scary face? Frightening means scary. Urgh. Finally, the leprechaun quit squirming and said, Tom Fitzpatrick, you're too clever for me. 
I see you are after my buried Trevor treasure. <laughs> I'll have to show you where it is hid. With his eye on the bitty man locked in his fist, Tom followed where the leprechaun led him. He trespassed all over a hill and under some hedges and through a ditch and across the peat bog. And at last, just when Tom feared he'd been hoodwinked, hoodwinked. So the leprechaun has him going all over the place. At last, just when Tom feared or was afraid of, He'd been hoodwinked. What do you think hoodwinked means? Let's write that down. Hoodwinked. Now, let me use it in a different sentence. I was hoodwinked by the girl and she took off with my candy. Hoodwinked is another word for tricked. So Tom was afraid he had been tricked. Okay. So Tom was afraid that the leprechaun had tricked him. Now, leprechauns are known to be sneaky, so I wouldn't put it past the leprechaun. Let's see. He found himself in a great field of weeds. Dig there, said the leprechaun, pointing to a bush. Deep, deep under that bullion. Hmm. Let's break that word down. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. B-O-L-I-A-U-N. So, ball -y. On, ballion, ballion, is where I put my gold. Thunderation, said Tom. I need to fetch my spade. Spade's another word for shovel. But when I return, I'll be lost. There are 40 acres of ballions here, and each plant looks just like the other. Now, I may be saying this word completely wrong, but I used our phonics to figure it out. So he is worried that when he comes back to this acre, this um, area, he's not going to know which plant to dig under when he goes to get his shovel. Still watching the leprechaun, Tom figured out a plan. He tied his bright red garter on the bush. See, the garter's around the top of his socks. They didn't used to have the stretchy stuff in their socks, so they tied ribbon around the top to keep their socks up. So he tied his bright red garter on the bush. Swear, you old rascal, that you won't take this off while I run to you back to get my spade or his shovel. That I will promise you, the little man said. Tom grinned, knowing leprechauns always kept their word. Now, since I have shown you where my treasure is, I don't suppose you'll need me anymore. No, said Tom, my fortune's made. You may go. Boop, 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 boop. And good luck go with you. Then goodbye, Tom Fitzpatrick, said the leprechaun. May you do much more good with what you find. Away, Tom ran as fast as he could. Yeah, he thinks he's getting gold, right? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Figuring out how he'd spend the gold. Then he came back with his shovel in his hand, back to the field of bullions. Bullions. Still confused, I'll have to look it up. But when he got there, lo and behold, a garter, just like his own, was tied to each and every bush for as far as he could see. That tricky leprechaun. He promised Tom he wouldn't take the ribbon off the plant, and he didn't. Instead, he just tied a ribbon onto every other plant, too. So now Tom doesn't know which one to dig under. Tricksy leprechauns. So Tom dug under the bullion where he thought he tied his garter, but nothing was buried under that bush. So he dug under another. He dug to the east and he dug to the west, and still he found no treasure. The harvest moon rose as he dug to the north, and then it set as he dug southward. When the sun came up, Tom saw he'd dug a hundred holes, and tired Tom Fitzpatrick knew he couldn't find that gold, so he gave up and headed for home. 
From then on, Tom always carried his spade, and he never stopped listening for tapping in the field. Every chance he got, he'd tell how he nearly found the gold. And since I'm a clever fellow, Tom would end his tale. The next time I catch that leprechaun, I'll have my fortune made. Because he's bringing his shovel with him. And look, the leprechaun's laughing at him. And here in this picture, he's an old man. And he still hasn't gotten the treasure. So. In all the old folk tales, leprechauns are very tricky. And so it's something that's kind of come into the new ones, um, into our new stories, like Gingerbread Man and the Leprechaun, Loose at School, and How to Catch a Leprechaun, and um, all kinds of leprechaun books. They're known as tricksters. That's kind of what makes a leprechaun a leprechaun. Okay, so the leprechaun hoodwinked Tom Fitzpatrick. So I'd like you, was it Fitzpatrick or Fitzgerald? It doesn't matter. Anyway, the leprechaun hoodwinked him. I'd like you to use the word hoodwinked or tricked, hoodwinked in a sentence in number four. Please use the word hoodwinked in a sentence. Okay. Have your mom or dad check that for you. And we're going to move on to math. Today, we're going to talk about non-standard measurement. Why? So you can, oh, so you have something to measure with all the time. So non-standard measurement means you can find something around you to write with or to measure with at all times. Um, but it's We've talked about the pros and cons of non-standard measurement and standard measurement, but today let's, let's do non-standard measurement. So how will you know you've learned it? You can measure things in the world. I can, oh, I used you here. I'm gonna use I so I stay in the same figure of speech the whole time, so, or um, point of view the whole time. So I have something to measure with all the time. How I know I've learned it, I can Measure things around me. Okay, so on the back of your paper, we're going to do some warm up questions. I want you to Show me 73 using your sticks and your dots for tens and ones. I want you to add 30 and 14, and I want you to take 10 away from 97. I want you to subtract 10 from 97, okay? We'll talk about this in a moment. I want you to pause the video and do the first three, please. Okay, so let's check your work, 73. How many tens do I have? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many ones do I have? Three. One, two, three. Easy peasy. All right, 30 plus 14. There's a couple different ways you can solve this. I like the standard way where you stack them. So zero and four is four. Three and one is four. So your answer is 44. But if I didn't wanna just stack them, you could draw it. So 30 is 10 threes and 14 is one ten and four ones. 
So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 44 is our answer. All right, 97 minus 10. 7, take away 0 is 7. 9 minus 1 is 8. Now, again, if you couldn't do it this way, you could always draw it. So let's draw 97. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 7 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then all we have to do is X out one of the tens. So you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. Perfect. Okay, so it says, how many shoes long is your room? We're still talking about your bedroom. So I want you to take the shoes you wear. These are Eli's and they're quite dirty. Um, <laughs> And you have two shoes, you don't have to wear them to do this, or you could wear them and step one in front of the other. But remember, no gaps and no overlaps. That's the big thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model measuring this box using marker lids. So I'm gonna use two marker lids to measure this box. So I have one, two, and I'm going to leave that one there while I bring this one over, three, four, Ooh, let's make sure I did that right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about six marker lids long. When you do your room, you're going to say it is about Blank shoes long. Okay. So um, have your mom or dad take a picture of this for me. Send it to me. I'd love to look at your work and see how you're doing. Um, I'm going to do our sight words in another video because already this is quite lengthy. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in and doing your work over spring break. I miss you all already. Mr. Fuzzy Bottom was glad to see you too. I love you. Stay safe and stay healthy, okay?